Finally, the new album by Scott Blackledge, including Destined to Fail. You're destined to fail. Destined to fail again. Letter. Gonna write you a letter to tell you just how I feel. Next step. I know you didn't leave me. That's my problem. It makes it so much harder to let go. And the single, Gracie doesn't care. Gracie doesn't care. Gracie doesn't care. Scott Blackledge, finally out now. Figure Four Radio. 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 Everybody, welcome to Figure Four Radio. It's the mastermind Ollie Spring, uh, and we are doing another Drive Time edition yeah. um, today. Joined by TJ Lee Hello. and making his return after two weeks, Alex Cupid. Um, Alex, how was your 21st birthday? Um, I can't remember. Is that you don't drink, there, do you? I, I, I do now, but I only drink one thing, and that is strong but dark fruits. Did you get drunk on your 21st? Birthday? Is that why you can't remember it? No, it's got taste. Well. I don't think I got drunk, I just went, like, I think on my, my 24th birthday I spent with you, so... I mean, you spent the, the you, you had the morning. I know you had UBW, didn't you, in the afternoon? Yeah, I had UBW. How was UBW? UBW was very good. Was that, was that the... Oh, wait, was that my birthday? Was that the ladder oh, show? No, 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 my birthday was BEW. BEW? Yeah. I knew there was a B in there. How, how was BEW? It was alive, it was very good. I cool. I wrestled uh, Damien. Okay, always, always fun. So, um, uh, also known as Brad Meadows. The craft. Great, so, then, so then, um, the, the uh, sex. Brett Meadows. Stop me. Sex demon. Brett um. Meadows. <laughs> um, was that? Oh, but I'll take you to Wow. Brett Meadows. <laughs> the greatest there in professional wrestling. Yeah, that's, that's like made Brett release that. Um, so yeah, folks, today was meant to be with, with some other people and then they dropped out for various reasons. Um, and... When that happens, you have to make do a model through. So yeah, we've been in a field today, lads. Yeah, we have been. Do, do we want to talk about that? Yeah, well, well, well you guys don't, but I will. <laughs> Go on, yeah, yeah. We went into a field, and these guys were meant to be commentating in the field, but they didn't get to commentate. I didn't even know it was going to be in a field. I knew yeah, nothing. We, we knew no, nothing. We had no idea. Like, we could have been at McDonald's you know, farm and acreage just across the road for what we knew. We had no idea. They just showed up and they were like, are we going to commentate something? No, we're not. And they realised that the days got muddled up and they did nothing, but I did something, so life is good. Yeah, you got you, you wrestled with a... Was he 13, 14 year old? 14, all the That's crazy. Like, and you say he's he's already better than some other people. You know? <laughs> yeah, he's better, he's better than me, probably. So, you know. Wow. But yeah, um, I wrestled um, with Charlie Day as D-Lo Dunn, because he looks like Pete Dunn. He really does like Pete Dunn. And, and you look like D'Lo Brown. Yeah, we go. And we face uh, Cos Industries, so you know. I feel like I don't see enough of those guys around. No, at you the don't. Moment. Um, I don't know why. Are they are they going underground at the moment? Do we know? Like, oh, I see. What <laughs> well, Cos has been a girl underground already, so I guess Malik is now pretty much has to be next. Yeah. But we had a guest on our last episode of our podcast. We had um, Alex from Wrestling Four. So, um, he's going underground with everybody from up north. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> so, like, what's the point? This isn't everyone, so it's great. But, um, yeah, really fun wrestling at field, and I think no, D-Lo Dunn has, has legs to it now for some reason. <laughs> so, um, here we are. Are you going to get yourself a body, like, body protector, chest protector? Because I'm going to have to now, eventually. You kind of do. You have to make sure Charlie May's got himself a little, uh, little gum shield and a furry jacket. And, uh, yeah, covers act. Done. Yeah, yeah, done. Hey! Oh, wrestle on chapter show? Nah, forget about that man. Just be cover wrestlers. I'm, I'm, I'm re- wrestled as D-Lo Dunn. D-Lo, 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 I literally just said D-Lo Dunn. D-Lo Brown. D-Lo Dunn. D-Lo, D-Lo Dunn. Um, so yeah, uh, what else? I had a whole list of things I was going to talk about. And I can't ask you guys about what it's been like since the last year I spoke to you. Um, <laughs> So yeah, all my questions out the door right now. Um, what else has happened? What, what's been happening recently? Should we, Terry? Should we, do you want to literally do a, a buckle bomb crossover? How do you do your buckle bombs? 
Do you, ha- do you have topics? Yeah, we talk about British wrestling scene, so we talk about news. There's not much news. Is there not? Is there not a lot of news? Oh, I think so. What Why about global wrestling instead? Then what's been happening? No, no, I was going to say there is news. There is definitely news. Da- download NXT UK tournament. What are our thoughts on that so far? Well, that's fun. And tomorrow they're going to like wrap it up. Or well, tomorrow, what, the first day, and then the next day they're going to wrap it up. So that should be pretty good. That's next week. But well, we're gonna see it next week, but it's gonna be taped and then Oh shit, is it being is it live yeah, tomorrow? I might go to Oh again, fuck, so. that means it's gonna be spoiled before we get a chance to watch it. Possibly. Huh? Possibly. Yeah, of course it will. I um everyone's gonna know. Oh motherfucker. There, there is one thing I did not like, uh, and that is the inclusion of Drew Gulak in the tournament. He's, he's already out of it though. Yeah, but I Did you see his yeah. match with Jack Gallagher? No. It was really good. Yeah, but the, here's, here's the thing that bothered a lot of people. Um it was completely and utterly pointless, and it's a massive, it's a massive slap in the face. There's, there are, because it implies that there are people that aren't ready for that spot. When we all know that there are many people that were deserving of that. Spot. I think it's also because they filmed that match at Full Sail University, which means that maybe they didn't have any British guys there. I, just think, I, I, think I think that's completely unnecessary, and I think, I think the reaction they got from workers and from fans alike was was very justified in that it just implied that well we don't have enough people to fill us up so sorry and just that's just it, it, it completely rubbed me the wrong way no, i think it's pretty cool like to have a guy like gulak in it because in a uk tournament though Drew, too, yeah tournament. Drew, Drew Gulak, yeah. i think he spent a lot of time um studying the british style yeah like not only he's like um a connoisseur of the british style but he's also very very fucking good in like yeah. Every single detail. I, I yeah. don't doubt his skill. It's just it's a UK tournament for also, UK like, competitors. For me, Jack, Jack this Gallagher. It's a local tournament for local people. Jack Gallagher. Jack Gallagher have your co- your Jack kind Gallagher idea. being in it again was Jack Gallagher being in it as well when he has a contract. It's a bit. Weird. Yeah. Same with like Drake Collins and Everlock being in it again as well. Yeah. So like, I, I would have personally liked to see a full full tournament of fresh faces. Yeah, I, th- I don't understand why they need to, again, being in return of your back just, it sends the implication that they don't think there's enough people. And I just, I just don't think that's, I don't think that's fair. But also, there's, there's, I think there's enough people, but they have to put into consideration the guys that maybe couldn't sign a contract, maybe weren't able to wrestle on a certain day, people that aren't cleared, like people are with World of Sport. Oh, there's sure. so many different factors there. I can see why they did it. I'm not even like in any way, shape or form, like gonna say, oh no, that's all wrong. No, like I think Drew Gulak being in it was pretty cool because Jack Gallagher beats Drew Gulak, it makes Jack Gallagher look pretty good. Whoever beats Jack Gallagher then looks amazing. Yeah. So it all it all pays off in itself. Because um, you know, so, is Gallagher so, really gonna win? So with, with Drew with Drew Gulak being in there, Teach, what are your thoughts on Travis Banks being in there? I don't really I don't really agree with it either, but at least he's part of the Commonwealth, which makes it a little bit more acceptable. He is he's a New Zealander part of the Commonwealth, I can but, actually uh, get behind that a little bit more. But then, as you say, it's saying, is there not other people that could take that spot? Absolutely, but he's the progress champion, dude. He represents the top of the UK. That's what I'm saying. So, like, whereas Drew Gulak is a signed contracted wrestler for the United States in WWE, there's just no, there's literally no reason for him to be there. That's that's kind of my point. Okay. Um, uh, I'm guessing you guys have seen the results at least of the first. Yes. The first round. Um, Any thoughts on the results? Uh, I would like to see Liguero get a bit more, personally, but he was against Travis Banks, so it's, you know. I think it's all really fun, like, there's that download, so they weren't really going to mm. pull out everything on the, yeah. on the FSM. There was, there was one result that really surprised me. Go on. And that was Joseph Connors and Ashton Smith. Oh, that didn't surprise me at all. Mm. No? No. Because to me, to me, Connors has obviously been here, done a lot, whereas to me, Ashton, I, I, I think this is potentially the first I've heard of him. If, well, I'm being, if I'm being honest. Yeah, like, that is going to sound like I'm cussing completely. That is entirely your fault because that's... Yeah, 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 I'm not, I'm yeah, not, yeah. He's, yeah. he's one of the damn best in the country, but um, he's always up north. He, he, he only, he's only come down to one progress show down south. All his other progress shows were in Man- Manchester and Sheffield, I think it was, in Birmingham, around that area. But he's, like, phenomenally talented. He's a coach yeah, at I'm, I'm not saying he's not good, just I don't know him, but... Yeah, so, like, him, uh, yeah. He's, he's well-renowned for being really skilled. So him going over Connors has been in Tom already. It gives him. It shows that they have faith in him as well. Yeah. yeah. So, but uh, I kind of like the surprises. I like it when the things I expect to happen don't always happen. Uh, it keeps you on my toes. Um, I'm trying to think, Dave. Uh, so actually, yeah. The, let me let me let me get my my mastermind Wikipedia Masterpedia app open because I need to figure out the uh, what they set up for the next the next rounds are all phenomenal matches as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I really enjoyed Kenny Williams versus um, Dave Mastiff. I haven't seen that one yet, to be honest. Yeah, it's an absolutely phenomenal match. Like, it, like all the matches are so simple, 
and it like throws the connotation that spot fests are a thing. It's like, you know, while, sit back to have fun. While Ollie's checking his master media, who do you have to win the tournament? Bamba? Oh, wait, no. <laughs> um, I really want Dave Mastiff to win the tournament because I love Dave Mastiff. I'm a big fan of Mastiff. Okay, fair enough. So the um, tournament brackets we've got at the moment, Zach Gibson versus Jack Gallagher, that is going to be a great match, yeah. right? That is, that's, that's a brilliant matchup. Yeah, and like to go back to Drew Gulag, Jack Gallagher has the momentum of an absolute god right now. He beat one of the best wrestlers in 205 Live. Yeah. He just beat Drew Gulag. He's going to come on set with more momentum than Gibson. And I imagine Gallagher might end up being a face now for that, maybe? I'm not entirely sure. I don't know what they want. I I don't I do not, I don't really care what they want because I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy as a fan. Yeah. Just enjoy myself for this one. That's a, that's a pure wrestler's wrestler match. Who who are we who are we do we think who 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 are we picking for that oh, one? Oh Gibson. Yeah, yeah, I think I, I think Gibson's, Gibson's gonna get pushed to the moon and back. He is the ultimate heel. I think Gibson has to make it to the final at least, to be honest. Um, Flash Morgan Webster, Jordan Devlin, another pretty cool oh, matchup. Devlin Hi hybrid so wrestlers. Much since his last outing there as well. Like watching him at progress, he is he is well and truly coming to his own as a performer. I'm gonna go with Flash because I think that. Um, I, I think Flash is because obviously he's yeah. been on 205 already. Um, so I think I think Flash versus Gibson in that in that um, in that quarter would be pretty good. Um, then we've got Joe Coffey and Dave Mastiff again. Oh. Fucking these matchups, right? I'm not gonna. They are all they are all just fucking amazing matchups right now. Like Coffey and Mastiff, that is two big guys. Who are just going to beat the shit out of each other, right? Yeah, I'm going to go. I don't want to, but I think Coffee might steal it. Yeah, because uh, I think Coffee has that bit more agility than Dave, and like, that's what's going to like. I'm, I'm, I'm being purely in game here because why not? I'll, I'll stick with Mastiff because I'm yeah. a big fan of Mastiff. Like, um, I, I love them both. I think they're both phenomenal athletes. So. And then Travis Banks and Ashton Smith. I say I, I still don't feel like I know an awful lot about Ashton Smith because in his match with Connors, he basically just took all the offense and snuck in at the last minute with his finisher and then got the win. So I still don't really feel like I know much about the guy yet. But I think Banks is going to go over. Yeah? Yeah, I think it's a given. I think we will because of the relationship with progress. No, I just I think he deserves it. I think he, he's put in an ungodly amount of work to get just to get where he was in progress now. And, you know, he, he's the strongest strong star last year. He's just at the, right now, he, he's, in my opinion, at his best. And I think they're getting him at his best. And I think they see that, and I think they, they want to put him, make him a star one way or another. So I just see him getting the nod. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking Travis Banks will go through on, on one on one bracket and Zach Gibson on the other. Um, that, that'll be the final. That's my prediction for the final. Um, yeah, this is about right. Do, do we think Pete Dunne, is, his championship is at risk? No. No? I'm going to say it's at risk, definitely. It's just... Um, I have no idea what WWE are going to pull. So. He's currently the second longest reigning champion ever crowd activity and I think they want to they give him a good record. He's already like, yeah, he done, he's done every year now. Yeah. Um, I just think, especially because he's got some huge opportunities and matches coming up at the moment, um, like in, just in general, like with the, the, the dream match with Ilya Dragunov, um, the, I think the dinner at WXW, or, no, sorry, Wembley, Progress. Um, I, think that, I think right now he is giving the belt a, more prestige for having it and going around and doing these matches. Um, I just don't see him losing it for a while. Uh, but then, you know, it, it, I mean, if he lost it to Travis or to Zach, if it was either one of those two, it's they're very worthy yeah. people to take it. So it, it, it's kind of the wonderful thing about this tournament is you look at the people that are still in it and the people that were eliminated for that matter. Any one of them holding that UK belt would do it such justice. So it's a, it's a, it's a win-win situation. Pete loses, Pete probably goes onto the main roster and starts wreaking havoc there. Pete retains. Yeah, the person who took him to his limits will get the rub and he'll get to carry on taking that belt to one of the, you know, other places around the world. Yeah, can't say further than that. Um, what's our other thoughts on the, to me, uh, almost a bit, I want to say dream match, and I know people shouldn't throw that, 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 that phrase around lightly, but um, uh, British Strong Style versus um, Undisputed Era on night one. Um, uh, 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 Royal Albert, well, that, that's that's a pretty sweet matchup again, right? That would be fun. Yeah, I think it's going to be a, good, a really good laugh. I mean, it's just it's just got all the elements it needs um, to be a really really great six man. So last night was NXT Takeover. Tonight is Money in the Bank. Um, 
I haven't seen any takeover. I think you guys have seen the opening match. The opening match. What, what was the opening match? It was the Undisputed Era versus Only Lorcan and Danny Birch. I'm a huge fan of Danny Birch right now. Well, I have been for a while. My own. Uh, I was at the Southside 4th anniversary show. I'm going to say about three or four years ago now. Um, Danny Birch was on that. I can't remember what it was. Was it Mindstone? Yeah, it's it's really, yeah. Stuff, yeah. yeah, and, and like he stood out then to me, and then to see him pop up on NXT and now get a proper push, um, I, I think that's brilliant because he is in absolute phenomenal shape. Um, I, I'm, I'm still pissed off that, in a way, that he isn't in the tournament. They, yeah. I think because he's in that tag team with, um, with Only Lorca, and them two are like them two are currently embroiled in like heavy feud of Unspeed Era. Yeah, like, I don't think it will make too much sense for him. Like, also, logistically flying him out to the UK or something just not have worked. Yeah. So you know, I didn't know much about either one of them, and then they made a believer out of me just through one match. Like, cool. They, they are they. Uh, yeah, I'd seen a little bit of them here and there, but uh, as I said, Alex at the time, I was like, I don't really know much about these guys. Watched the match, I was just like, okay, yeah, they they are as legit as people are saying they are. So. Um. Money in the bank. Are we? Are we fussed? Does no. anyone care? I am. I, I, I'm so fussed. I'm can't wait. I can't wait for. It. I love it. I love it. I can't wait for to see Samoa Joe win because I love Samoa Joe. But like, um, I love Joe. But no, like, I'm, 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 I'm such a kid, so I love WWE pay per views. So I get really excited and giddy out over it. Like, but people are like old oh, men like DJ. They're like, oh, no, we're not really too fussed up before takeover. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> You're ready. Who, who are your? Do you have any predictions? Samoa Joe wins everything. You everything. Know. You cash it you know, like like crashes the women's match. Yeah, good luck. Yeah. Uh, I, I think Ellsworth might end up coming back because that's what I heard. A few people have said that. I don't get why that would be the case, oh, but no. could be. No idea. But yeah, um, Samoa Joe wins the men's one in my ideal world. That's what I want to win. Uh, Ember Moon to win the women's one, so. Mm, that'd be good. I love Samoa Joe Wing because I just I, I just really want to see him have that universal strap. He's just got everything he needs. Uh, anything a wrestler needs to be uh, a legit threat and a, and a proper champion. But um, I'm I'm probably not going to watch. He's too cool to watch it. No, I got work too in cool. Too cool. He's going to kill me. <laughs> I, I might watch it from Center Park. <laughs> That's yeah, a plan. Right all of us have a holiday. Well, oh. I'm sorry, like, I'm sorry. Hey, that you just have it. The last one yeah. to work himself. Hey, you know what? No. Fuck you and having a good <laughs> life with the full holiday, okay? Fuck you and using all your wrestling money for the past year to go away. <laughs> no, you deserve it. I need it, man. I'm absolutely, I'm, I'm worn out right now. Yeah. Um, so, what else? There must be more happening in the UK right now. Black Lives Matter. Huh? Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. Is that a thing in the UK? I don't think so. No. Uh, <laughs> what have I missed? <laughs> Uh, so money in the bank is covered. See, this is the problem. Keep it, you were in, you were in like two weeks ago. So we've got, I've kind of asked you. Oh, uh, was there anything that you that you didn't get to say in the last podcast that you wish you had? Maybe I am Dylan D'Angelo. Yeah, you are. Possibly. See, actually, I saw I saw you in glasses the other week. Uh, I want to say that DOA maybe. No, where did I see you in glasses? And I was like, actually, I can now kind of see why you guys look similar. It was probably was that the other way, yeah. Yeah, was that last time I saw you? Yeah. Um, yeah. Where you were taking liberties with Jacob Daniels and... Uh, oh, yes. And Khan Thank and Tim Lee and, and, yeah. yeah just, Shop, just, shops are plenty. Just, just killing everybody, right? Fucking liberties, mate, liberties. I have, I have a question. Um, so, Ollie has not uh, watched a lot of progress, so I, I don't know if you've watched any. I haven't seen it. The only yeah. progress I've seen was that one where the hard cam fucked That's up it, and they yeah, released the... Uh, yeah. So, um, you know, you, you were both, you're both a fan of progress and you have worked on progress. Yep. Um, to both Ollie and to people that are very unsure of it, can you, you know, in, 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 I'm not unsure of it, I know exactly what it is. No, 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 no. people who are unsure of it. Okay. Saying you, to, to yourself who's not seen it, um, and people who are unsure about it, could you explain why it is, the, so I have such a special more about and why it is one of the top promotions in the UK? So, um, you have A, B, C wrestling promotions, and they're like really fun, happy go lucky. And then progress is like Z, it's a bit out of its way, own way, own little bubble, and it does its stuff really well. Just like it's out of its own, it's in its own little world, and it's um really hard hitting action as well. And there's a mixture of strong style, which is based on the Japanese style of wrestling, also mixed with somewhat emotional characters and general bitchiness heels and aggressive heels and then really happy go lucky baby faces but um yeah like I just, like progress is what progress is and it has like the punk rock atmosphere about it and um go to a show rather than watch on demand going to a show is a lot better 
So I've got tickets for the Wembley show. <laughs> that's that's a, that's that's the show. Well, I get the feeling I'm not going to get a proper progress experience from that because of how different. Like I, I went to see Frank Turner at Wembley, and seeing Frank Turner at Wembley was really cool, but it was so different to seeing him at the Roadbender in Northampton. Yeah, there like, was a massive, it was a very different feel. Yeah, I saw him at Sugar Mill uh, when I was literally the end of my first year, and he was playing to 300 people, if that. Just him and a guitar, and it was just an amazing environment. The, the one of the best gigs I've ever played. And then uh, two months later, I saw him um, at the O2 Academy in Manchester with the Sleeping Souls, with nearly yep. three thousand people. Yeah, and uh, yeah, very different, very very different. So I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to really get the full. Like if we if we get booked to the progress show and come soon, like I'll come you guys in. Like really? Guest list. Well, yeah. Can you do that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shit. Yes. yeah. They get guests. So then um. Tiz knows he's a guest himself, so you know, um, you know. <laughs> but um, is he not managing you guys? Oh, he might as well be, right? Never, never say Tiz. Never say Omen Tiz. Yeah. That, Omen that's, say just, that's not gonna work. <laughs> nah. that's, that's terrible on the wrong match. Never say Omen. There you go. <laughs> never say tarot cards. <laughs> it's like dampening from, from, from um, X Men just friendship. Yeah, so just it, just help the crowd with really sharp tarot cards. Nice. I like that. I like that. I'm gonna use that. Thank you. Lawsuit. Oh, that's a lot of traffic. And that's fine. But yes, um, progress is really fun. Like, yeah, it's, fun. I thought, I, it's not that. It's not that I don't want to. Don't, I, I'm, but it's, there's there's so much out there. I can't even keep up with what's on the network. So trying to keep up with. I'm struggling now. Yeah, like I was. I was. I'm trying to catch up with TNA at the moment, and I'm now up to mid October from last year. You said you're enjoying it. I haven't even got to Bound for Glory, but like the episode I was watching is just so bad. Why? Oh man, skip until. Watch the episode before Sammy Callahan hits Eddie Edwards. <laughs> oh, I've, I've seen one with the baseball bat. Yeah, yeah, I've, yeah. Seen, I've seen that again. Yeah. Literally, watch the episode before that and then start watching from there. It is so fucking amazing. Okay, yeah. Why this is it thing. bad though? Why is so, it So, the that? episode I was watching, it's little things. It's mainly production. The in ring stuff, there's nothing wrong with it. The, the impact crowd is still the impact crowd. Nothing much you can do about that. Um, but that's, so, they're leading up to Bound for Glory. And, um, like, so for example, um, it's LAX and Ohio versus everyone, and they're basically o o OVE are cutting their in-ring promo um, about what match they want to choose uh, for Bound for Glory. Right. And just before they start talking about what type of match they want, the commentary team, I think it was Jeremy Borash, goes, of course, of course you know, these guys set to, to lock up in a 5150 street fight at Bound for Glory. And then they start talking, and they're like, well, so, we could have you guys in a ladder match, we could have you guys in a Falls Count Anywhere match, and then, like, Conan goes, how about you bitches take us on a 5150 street fight? And there's me watching thinking, but wait, that's what the commentator just said was happening, so why are they saying this now? Uh. And, like, there was footage of Moose going to American Top Team Academy, um, they showed the same video, like, the same bit of him going in there about three times, um, the amount of, I, I swear, in a two hour show, at least one hour of it is replays of things that you've just seen. So they will, so like there'll be a three minute talking segment, they'll then cut to a break, they'll come back from the break, and they'll replay the talking segment that you've just seen. And then they'll replay like Destination X from like 4,000 years ago. Like why? I, it's just, it, I, it feels like they could cut it down into one hour and still get the same goal, so why? Why stretch it out with repeats and, and repeated videos and all yeah. this shit? That's why Lucha Underground works because it's obviously number one. It's, it's pre-recorded. Less is more. Um, yeah, and it's 48 minutes, and it's just you get like the tiniest of little replays of stuff that's happened, but very rarely. It's usually you know they introduce it, they start with a match that's already you know one prepares in the ring, they then have a couple of backstage segments, and then the show. It, it's so it's like a well-oiled machine. Well, the reason so, why they do replays so much on like when they're on Impact is because. Some people still watch it live and they can't, they come into it like later on. Yeah. So they're like, here's what happened for you guys that missed it, and then we'll show all that stuff. So it's nice for us, but some people don't have Sky Plus or whatever it is. Who watches it live though, really? People like I know a lot of people that have Sky Plus, maybe because I'm black and then not very happy. <laughs> like let's because I'm black, yeah. Uh, wow. Like, no, because like I know a few people who are like are below the property line, you know, so Fair like, they don't have like Sky Plus and they like watch one minute raw at midnight and stuff wow. like that. So it's like, you know, they, they, they pull it off. 
Um, so with Lucha Underground, yep. it doesn't currently air in the UK. No, we were talking about so, this. So how, do you, how does a British wrestling fan living in Britain yeah. watch Lucha Underground? So I actually, uh, I, I, again, I was talking about this last time, I actually emailed their, um, their I guess like their, their marketing team. And I said, like, I'm a big fan. Um, I used to be able to watch your product uh, legally and pay for it because you want to support indie wrestling. Um, since 2016, I'm not able to. They've revoked it from iTunes. Um, it's no longer on UK Netflix. And it was never on UK Netflix. At one point, for like 30 days, it was on there. And then if it was, I'd on, have known about it and I'd have watched it. It's been on US and Canadian Netflix. I know, I know it's been on US and Canada. And, and um, they, they, they basically took any, any ability away for it to be watched. And um, they were like, and then they just got back and said, we don't have syndication rights at the moment in the, in, in the UK. The only way you can actually watch it is streaming it, which is in its own right incredibly difficult because they take they take down any streams that come up. So if you can't torrent it, which I'm not going to encourage anyone does, um, you really can't, and that's the problem. Uh, like it's a shame because it's such a, an incredible program. There's nothing like it out there, and they make it so difficult to get. Um, like you can get like certain some people pop like free matches and one on YouTube, but it really is restrictive in that. Basically, have to go through legal means just to get it in the yeah. UK, which which they have said in interviews. Uh, Eric Wagner have said it before. They are going to try and fix this year because they want people to watch season four. Because obviously, they don't get renewed if the ratings are low. But if they can prove the ratings are high in foreign countries, then you know more reason to keep it. I mean, they 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 struggle to get season four, so you know hopefully we we can get it. But it's a shame because like you're you know you have to basically use a VPN. Or change your location on the US Netflix and you can get season one and two. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's well, I, I don't want to be messing around with that sort of stuff. No. I, I don't want to be any of that. And that's what's frustrating. Well, like, I'd really love to watch, like, season, just soak it up yeah. properly. Like, I, one of the main things I don't like with pirating is quality. I, I, I don't like risking poor quality or, yeah. um, or buffering or like, oh, that sort well, of shit. I will say this with regards to what I was saying before, you don't have quality issues anymore. Okay. Those days, those days are long, long gone. You're talking like back in the day when you were, when you and I were kids, and you tried to get something like that. You would you would get really low quality. And certainly now you can get cam versions of movies, which are awful. But uh, generally with wrestling stuff, because it's direct transmission, you're just taking it from that transmission. So it's it's usually. I mean, in in other people's experiences, not my own, it's just the same quality as Netflix. It's no different. It's 720 or 1080p. So, in that regard, if that was something you're interested in, it's not an issue whatsoever. Yeah, I might have to uh, find find ways. Yeah. You never know, you never know. Um, you know what, I'm not going to lie, I'm absolutely knackered. It was an early start today. Yeah, um, very. And uh, it's just been a very tiring day. Um, it, do we want to plug stuff now? Like, should, should we start plugging stuff and saying goodbye? Um, yeah, you guys can go first. Is it, Mr. Keeper, is there anything you want to plug right now? Hashtag. Black Lives Matter, hashtag funeral, hashtag singers king, hashtag black Callahan, hashtag worldwide desperado, hashtag black desperado. They're just hashtags. Um, You're not plugging anything. At, you know, at um, Buckle, Buckle Bomb Podcast. Buckle Bomb Podcast. Buckle Bomb. Hashtag worldwide desperado. When is it out? Um, <laughs> but, um, do you have a schedule? We, just, we do it once a week, but sometimes the days change now because we, we experiment with things, you know? Because Jake Jeremy, he goes to wrestling league quite a lot, right? He does. So, if you're starting to get booked for wrestling league, you might see him all right? Probably, yeah. Yeah. Nice. We um We met Bret Hart last one. Um, at I am Alex Cupid on everything called Midlife Crisis at the age of 21. And then, um, that is about it. Cool, Tej. Uh, you can find me at TJ Lee, T-J-A-Y-L-E-A. Um, or just Tej, T-E-W-E-J, um, on Facebook. And uh, if not, so uh, I have my own show called The Finger Pot of Doom, um, which is on hiatus at the moment. It'll be coming back soon. Well, you say that. How's about after I plug myself? Yep. Uh, how's about next week? We we go back in time and we we, we do a, a little um, little finger pot of yours driving oh. back in a thunderstorm. Yeah, that that, that be, sound does that sound yeah, something you so want to do? Yes, yeah, so you can catch that. Then that'll be the. The, the, the newest episode. Um, there we go. Yeah, let's do, on the let's do that next library. week. Yeah, the rest is on the Figure Four Library. Um, you can find it there. Um, yeah, and um, that's basically where you can you know catch me. There we go. So I've been the Mastermind Ollie Spring at F4R underscore Mastermind on most social medias. Figure Four Radio on Facebook. Uh, you're listening to the podcast, so you already know where to find us. Uh, but we've been joined by Alex Cupid. <laughs> by TJ Lee um, and we will see you next week yeah me and TJ are going to do a, uh, a time travel edition 
of the finger pod, but for no lightning. We're gonna, we're, we're gonna drive through lightning. Um, it's gonna be fun. Uh, we'll see you next week, folks. Yeah. Figure four radio.